Hey everyone, if you're new here, my name is Andrew Hess. If you're not new here and you've been growing with me, with us for this entire year, I just wanna say thank you. It's been a wonderful year, 2024, and I have a lot of great things planned for 2025. I have some great ideas. AI is taking over and I know there's a little resistance to AI, but there's also a lot of excitement. We're gonna learn AI, we're gonna learn Copilot, we're gonna venture off into other categories, especially we're gonna keep going with the Power Platform. I have a lot of plans next year for 2025, but today let's go over one of your questions from a comment that I received uh, maybe like a week ago. Uh, let's knock this out and I will see you next year in 2025. Thank you all for watching. I'm very excited. Let's keep this going. All right, I had another question here from Mo Chaba. And I wanted, he said, I'm taking this opportunity. I'm using multiple screens. I would like to add a pop-up or reminder to the end user to save, or you might lose your current data when you move to the next screen. I really like this question. This is something we can knock out fairly quickly for the end of the year. This may be a short video, but let's try and make this simple. Come in with a very simple approach and knock this out. Let's make a pop-up from a form and if you try and navigate away using your back button, it does a pop-up and it says, hey, you might lose your data if you back up. So let's, let's create this. We have a form and we have a back button here. So we have a form and we were working on this at the end of, uh, in December. We will work on this for a while in December. And we have a button here at the bottom to add an accessory. And it's a very simple form. It's only honestly three choices, but just imagine if you had a large form, you could potentially lose a lot more data than these three fields if you had a very large form, right? But I'm just gonna try and keep it simple for the video. So you lose your data and we want this back button and maybe your back button is on the left side or it's somewhere else. I'm not worried about UI UX right now. What we're gonna focus on is a pop-up that appears after you hit the back, bu the back button. The way that I like to do this and to keep this very simple, I'm gonna add a container. And I'm gonna add a horizontal container. And this horizontal container is gonna contain my entire pop-up, but, but it's also gonna have some other features inside there. So this container is gonna take up the entire space. The width is gonna be parent.width. So the parent of this container is actually my screen. So whatever the size of my screen is, that's the width and the height is also going to be parent.height. So once again, the parent is my screen. And what I like to do is I like to darken this container. So I'm gonna to go to fill and I don't see it here on the right side. I do see color. I wonder if that's fill. Oh, that is fill. So color is fill but I'm gonna to go to the drop down and go to fill. And what I would like to do is make the entire thing black. And to do that, it's the absence of color. So in RGBA, it's zero, no red, no green, no blue, and an alpha value of one to make it entirely black. So now the container is very dark, but what I like to do is I like to make it transparent. And to do that is I change the alpha value to a decimal. So 0.1, maybe we'll go a little more. Let's go to 0 0.33, all right? So I really like the way this container is because I can't click on anything in the background. So in the background, nothing is able to be clicked on. My container is blocking all of that. So this pop-up is now blocking the entire screen and we're gonna add another container. And I guess this will just be, let's see, should we do a horizontal or a vertical? Vertical container seems nice. Let's do a vertical container. So down here I have container five and container six. This is my, we'll just call this a POP a dark background. And this one will be named, rename pop, pop up, I don't know. And the second container, I don't want it to take up the entire space. I want it to be in the center. So I want it to be centered. 
centered and let's kind of let's change the color of this one just so we can see some things right now let's change this one to white all right so we can see my second container inside my first container and i think it's too wide i'm going to add a padding on the pop-up dark background so on the padding i'm going to add maybe let's try 150 on the right 150 on the left and maybe we want this pop-up to be a little bit bigger i feel like it could be a little bit bigger we're going to click on this container on the pop-up container on the white background let's increase the height right now it's set at 200 let's change that to 350 there we go so we have some more space so we have one container two containers and in the second container we're going to have our text and we're also going to have a button but maybe even two buttons so we'll have a button a text and it's going to be centered so let's center this text let's center everything there we go and this text will also align in the center are you sure you wish to navigate away before saving and let's make sure this text has more space there we go so that text has more space our button maybe we're gonna have two buttons and so instead of putting a button here what I need to do is another container I know this is gets into like so many containers but I want a button on the left and I want a button on the right and so in order to do that I need another container and it's gonna be horizontal so we have our text up here which I'm now going to let me move me I'm now going to turn on flexible height so down here I have flexible height I'm going to turn that on and also on this container I want to make sure that flexible height is on so it's on both of them now for our text maybe I want to pull this down now instead of it being centered so the vertical line I'll pull to the bottom and maybe we'll give it a little bit more space or we can give it a gap in our pop-up our pop pop-up will have a gap of 100. there we go that pulled it up way too much let's go 50 maybe 20. all right and you can see the difference in those containers and now there's a gap so there's a container here and there's a gap here and something that drives me crazy i don't know exactly why microsoft does this is there's a very small line right here it's very faint there's like a gray line and in order to get rid of that gray line of the container you have to change the drop shadow to none and that gets rid of that gray line so just make sure that drop shadow is now none and then we're going to have two buttons so we're going to have a button and another button and these buttons are going to be centered centered and we want a gap in the container so this is our container seven let's call this pop um buttons so this is our pop-up our buttons and it needs a gap of 50. so now we have two buttons a nice pop-up we can see how it looks that looks pretty good it, it looks pretty professional I'm, I'm sure you can work on the ui ux even better than me maybe you want backgrounds pictures everything but Let's just get the basic structure first, and then you guys can decide how to do your UI UX you, you would like. Now for the buttons, it is, let's say we have exit, maybe exit, and the other is save and exit, save and exit. So that's, that's the way you see it when I look at other apps if you think about other apps and, and think about people who do this professionally think about if you go to you know very famous apps a lot of times when I, I don't know the best way to do it I actually go to Google I go to Google and I are you sure you wish to navigate away and then I'll look at images on Google and we can see all these different options, right? We have what Google, 
confirm navigation. We have yes, yes, stop warnings. Okay. I like to look at how other people are doing it and to decide how I want to do it for my app, right? There's nothing wrong. Whenever you're coding, you never really like to start on a blank sheet and you like to come up with ideas and you can kind of see what other people are doing. I like how this one is dark and has blue buttons. Are you sure you wish to navigate away? Leave this page, stay on this page. None of them say save and exit. You have unsaved changes. Ooh, I like that. Leave and stay. That's the one I like. You have unsaved uh, changes. Let's do that. You have unsaved changes. You have unsaved changes. I like that, the way that is. And then I'm going to add another text in here. And I'm going to move it up with a um, with the bracket. If you navigate away, you will lose your unsaved changes. Navigate away. Something like that. And we'll stretch it out. Uh, and then we want to center it, right? So align in the center. You have unsaved changes. If you navigate away, you will lose your unsaved changes. Navigate away. And then let's see, it says leave and stay. Let's do that. Leave. And it's very important that your app is consistent across many other apps. People do things in apps intuitively, right? Their minds go to certain places. Leave is on the right side. Stay is on the left side. If you flip those, you maybe confuse a user. You want your users to not have to, you want your app to be intuitive. You want to be able to hand your app off to someone and, and not give much instructions. The more instructions you have to get, the more complex your app is, that's where you have issues and you don't want to develop like that. So leave and stay. And the stay button is like a black color. Let's let's change the color to maybe like a darker in the palette, a gray. And the leave button can stay blue. I like that. I think that looks pretty good right there. And a user is their eyes, right? So it's very important. Where does the user's eyes go? The user's eyes are going to go to the leave button because it has color. They're going to kind of not focus on the stay, but if they really want to stay, they can. All right. So all of that is like not about programming, programming power apps, but all of this is very important in software development, all software development. Where do the user's eyes go? Is it intuitive? Is it easy? Is this difficult? No one likes clicking twice, right? You're adding a pop-up. Everyone hates clicking more than once. I promise you, no one likes to click twice, but we're going to make them do it this time. All right. The happy new years for our app. You're going to have to click twice to leave. If you don't uh, save for this button here, the stay, we're going to create a variable and I'm just going to do a context variable. So I'm going to say update context context. And it, it it's a, it requires a squiggly and a, parentheses and it's going to say variable pop up and what it's going to do is exclamation variable pop up so whatever the pop up is on it's going to be the opposite so if it's true it's going to turn to false if it's false it's going to turn to true we have a variable that now changes back and forth so i can go over that real quick too i don't go over that that much imagine we have a text here and it is variable pop-up. Every time I click this button, it goes back and forth, back and forth. That's what the exclamation mark does. So whatever pop-up is, go to the opposite of what it is. I'm gonna delete that. With our stay button, it's going to go to false or true. And our pop-up here, the visibility property is then going to become that variable that's going back and forth. True, false, true, false. So var, var pop up. So now when I click on it, it disappears, 
right? Because it's false, but we, we don't get it back again. Our back arrow is going to not navigate us anymore. It's going to update context, the same thing, var pop-up, and it's gonna do the opposite again. And it is not going to navigate us away. It's going to, our back button, is going to make our pop-up appear. And on this, the leave button, we are now going to add navigate away. So we can stay, back, leave, go back. You also wanna make sure when you do leave, so say you leave and then you come back in, the pop-up is still here. So you wanna make sure on this leave button, you also update your variable. So on the leave button, you update your variable, you turn off your pop-up, and then you navigate away. So now when you hit play, leave, it then navigates away, and you come back in, and the pop-up does not appear. And the last and final thing you wanna do is, is check for those empty values. And to do that, I just came up with this very simple one, and I said, hey, if it is not blank, you can see here, if it's not blank, and you can look at the color codes, if it's not blank, or if this is not blank, then you do the pop-up, right? So right now, and if it if they are blank, then you navigate away. So right now, if I click on the back button, it navigates away. But if we, we do another one and we write something in here, then you get the pop-up. Now there's many different ways to do the is not blank. And I, I feel like that's a whole nother video where I could talk forever. There's there's tricks like coalesce. There's also, you can see I did an or value here. Some people get confused with that. That Those two lines are the same as writing the word or. It's just, I'm used to doing that in code and that's how I'm used to seeing it. But you can write the word or and that's the same thing. And then you would just say or not is blank. And we're gonna look at this value here which is data card value 14. So let's go back to it. Or if data card value 14 dot selected dot value is not blank, then it also will navigate away. So let's, so watch this. So now it's blank. We navigate away, everything's fine. If we click add accessory and we select something and then we try and navigate away, it doesn't let you navigate away. So you could do the or statements and, and I my brain uses the is not blank. That's the way I do it. And that's the last and final thing you need to do is just check for those blank values and navigate away if you have values in there. To me, I think I gave you the most simple, best way to make a pop-up in an app. You're using a context variable. You're thinking about where the button should be you can use Google or Bing or Yahoo or Ask Jeeves, whatever you want to look up how other people are doing it to build out your um, pop-up. I love the dark background. Now I can't click anywhere from this container. We have three containers. It is responsive. You can leave or stay. And that's how I'm gonna leave you for the new year. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate everybody. It's been a wonderful new year. You guys gave me the best gift ever, and that was 10,000 subscribers. So thank you all for watching. I hope next year we do even better and the videos get better and better and better. And I will see you, if I see you at a conference, awesome. Can't wait to meet you. Thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess, and I shall see you next year. Thank you.